Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to solve Bode plot problem number 5 part 1. And the problem is for the function g h of s draw the Bode plot. So the first step is this is our given problem. We have to substitute the value of s as j omega. So when you substitute the value of s as j omega here the given expression gets modified like this, right? 1 plus 2s becomes 1 plus 2j omega. 1 plus 4s becomes 1 plus 4j omega. Likewise, this expression also. Then the first step is we are going to find the magnitude plot. To find the magnitude plot, we should find the corner frequencies. So what are the corner frequencies? That is when we take the reciprocal of the coefficient of s. That is from directly from the problem I am saying. What is the coefficient of S here? It is 2. So when you take reciprocal, it becomes 1 by 2. Its value is 0.5 radian per second. Right. And again, when you look at the next term, it is the coefficient of S is 4 here. So when you take, take reciprocal of 4, that becomes 0.25. And finally, we are having 0.25, right? So when you take reciprocal of 0.25, that becomes 4 radian per second. Right. So these are all the corner frequencies. Then after finding the corner frequencies, we should give them the name. That is omega c1, omega c2 and omega c3. How to give the name here? That is the least value should be named as omega c1. That is first corner frequency. You see, this is the least value, right? When you compare with 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.25 is the least value. So, this is our first corner frequency. So, here I am naming it as omega c1, right? Then the next higher term is, it is 0 0.5, right? So, this will be our omega c2. And finally, this will be our omega c3. So, this expression has three corner frequencies. Right. So, we should always name the frequencies based upon its ascending order. Right. Not upon the given order. If we consider given order means this is our first term. Right. We should name this one as omega c1. It is wrong. Right. First, you have to find the values and then you have to name the frequencies according to the ascending order. Right. So, the next step is forming a table. So, our table has four columns term, corner frequency, slope and change in slope, right. So, how to arrange the terms? That is, the first importance should be given to individual term, that is a number along with some S yes terms. So, this is our problem, right. So, in this problem, we are having only number, there is no individual S yes term, right. We are having only this combined terms. No individual S term. So, the first term in the table 1 is an individual that is a constant. So, here we are having 5. So, the first term is 5. Right. Then the next step is we have to write our corner frequencies. The corner frequencies should be arranged as omega c1, omega c2 and omega c3. In other words, in the ascending order of corner frequencies. Okay. This is your next thing to do. First, you have to write the corner frequencies. So, after writing the corner frequencies, we have to write the terms here. You see, here the corner frequency is 0.25, right? So, again, when you look here, which term gives you 0.25? This term, right? That is 1 divided by 1 plus 4s gives you this corner frequency. So, we have to write 1 divided by 1 plus 4j omega, right? Then the next is 0.5. So, which term gives you 0.5? So, here 0.5 is given by 1 by 2 and this 2 is present in this term. So, 1 plus 2s gives you 0.5 corner frequency. So, the second step is you have to write 1 plus 2j omega, right? Similarly, the omega c3 is given by 1 divided by 0.25. So, 1 divided by 0.25 is... You see, 1 divided by 0.25 is given by this term. So, we have to write that respective terms here. Right? Hope you people are clear with this. Then the next thing is we have to write down the slope here. So, here you see this j omega is in denominator part. So, omega always contribute a slope of 20 decibel per decade. Right. Since omega lies here in denominator, here I have written minus 20. 
right? If omega lies in numerator, we can write plus 20. Since omega lies in denominator, here I had written minus 20, right? Then the next thing is, look at this term. This term is the numerator term, right? So, omega lies in numerator here. So, it contributes a slope of plus 20, right? Then the next thing is, again, omega lies in denominator. So, this contributes a slope of minus 20, right? Then the next thing is, we have to find the change of slope. So, how to find the change of slope? Here, here again, the constant term doesn't contribute any slope. So, here the slope value is 0, right? So, for change of slope, this is a normal procedure. This slope value should be shifted here and we have to move this value to the right hand side here. So, 0 minus 20 will give you minus 20 and this minus 20 is again put down here. So, this minus 20, again when you move this plus 20 to the right hand side, what happens? Minus 20 plus 20 will give you 0. And finally, again when you move this 0 downwards and this minus 20 to the right hand side, here we are having minus 20. Right? Hope you people under, understand this table. Right? If you have any doubt, you just, you can Ask me in the comment section and this is the basic step of forming a magnitude plot, right? So here each and every step should be written correctly. Then only you will be getting a fine magnitude plot. So here we have to select the frequencies. That is we have to choose a low frequency omega L such that omega L is less than omega C1. And we have to select a higher frequency omega h and that omega h value should be greater than omega c2, right? So, let the value of omega l be 0.1 because our first corner frequency value is 0.25, right? So, we had selected as 0.1. Then the next thing is omega h is 10 because our omega l value that is the maximum value is 4 here. So, here the omega h is taken as 10, even you can take 50, 100, whatever you want, okay. There is no restriction in selecting the corner frequencies. You can take the value you wish. Then the next thing is, the value of a is given by, that is magnitude is denoted as a here. It is given as mod of j of j omega in dv. So, now we are going to find the value of a at all these values of frequencies. So, first at omega equal to omega L, the value of A is given by mod of G of J omega. So, when you look at the problem here, so this problem only has a constant term of 5 here, there is no S term. So, while calculating the values of magnitude at omega L, so this omega L magnitude is calculated by formula this 20 log any number with individual S term. Here this problem consists of only number. So we had taken 20 log 5 which gives you plus 14 dB. Right. Again at omega equal to omega C1 we have to use the same formula. So again that gives 20 log 5 plus 14 dB. Right. Next thing is at omega equal to omega C2. So, for this case, we have to look at our table. So, this is the formula. You just look at the formula so that it will be easy for you. That is change of slope from omega C1 to omega C2 into log of omega C2 by omega C1 plus A when omega equal to omega C1. Right. Now, we will find the change of slope. So, this is your omega C1 and this is your omega C2. What is the change of slope here? So, the change of slope from omega C1 to omega C2 is this minus 20, right? Now, we are going to substitute this value. So, when you substitute here, you see minus 20 into log of omega C2 value is 0.5 and omega C1 is 0.25 plus the value of A when omega equal to omega C1. So, when omega equal to omega C1, the value of A is 14 dB. So, you just substitute the values here and finally when you solve, you are getting the answer as plus 8 dB. Right. Then the next thing is at omega equal to omega C3. Again here the formula is change of slope from omega C2 to omega C3 into log of omega C3 by omega C2 plus again the value of A when omega equal to omega C2. Right. Now again we have to look at our table. 
this is our omega c2 this is our omega c3 so what is the change of slope here here the change of slope is zero so when you substitute here here we are getting the expression like this right zero into log of omega c3 is 4 and omega c2 is 0.5 Again plus the value of a when omega equal to omega c2. So when omega equal to omega c2 the value of a is plus a db. So just substitute here. So 0 into anything is 0. So 0 plus 8 gives you 8 db. Right. And the last thing is that omega equal to omega h. So here again the formula looks like this. Change of slope from omega c3 to omega h into log of omega h by omega c3 plus the value of a when omega equal to omega c3. Here the thing is at omega equal to omega h right. So when writing log this omega h term should come in the numerator. Okay the remaining term that is the term which is previous to omega h is omega c3. So that occupies your denominator part and again the value of a we should use only this term omega equal to omega c3 right now we will look at the table again here the omega h value will be 10 right so when you arrange in ascending order this will occupy the last place here so change of slope from omega c3 to omega h so this is your omega c3 and this omega h so this minus 20 will be contributed here right so the change of slope from omega c3 to omega h will be minus 20 so just substitute the values here so minus 20 log of 10 by 4 plus 8 so this gives an answer of minus 8 so minus 8 plus 8 gives you 0 db so finally we had find out the values of magnitude for all the listed frequency so here I had written it in the table format so it will be easy for us to mark it in the semi-log sheet right. So finally our magnitude values are obtained. Then we are moving to the phase plot. So how to do the how to obtain the expression for phase plot again we have to look at our problem. So this is our problem here. So from this problem we are going to write this expression. So how to write the expression again the constant term won't provide any angle so no need to consider the number here. When you move to this side how to write the expression for the phase is tan inverse of imaginary term divided by real term. So here tan inverse of the imaginary term is 2 omega the real term is 1. So the first term is tan inverse of 2 omega right. Again, when you look at the second term, how to write the expression here? Again, tan inverse of 4 omega divided by 1. And I am moving this denominator term to the numerator side. So, I had included a minus sign here. Minus tan inverse of 4 omega. Likewise, again when you write terms here, minus tan inverse of 0.25 omega divided by 1. Right. So, this is the expression for the phase plot. So, after writing the expression, again... In our table, we have to list out all the frequencies for which we have calculated the magnitude. That is, you see, here I have included these frequencies, right? These five frequencies, it is mandatory to include while calculating the phase plot. After that, you can include the between values also and even higher values also. Okay, when you take more values of frequencies, you will get a more accurate phase plot. Okay, that is the reason. So, here... I had taken all these five values of frequencies in the phase plot. So you see here I had listed out all the thing and even I had taken between values as well as the higher values also. Right. So after taking this corner frequencies next step is we have to calculate the values. So here you see in the expression the first term is tan inverse of 2 omega. So tan inverse of 2 here the omega value is 0.1. So tan inverse of 2 into 0.1 will give you this 11.3. Likewise you can calculate for rest of the values. Similarly again for this tan inverse of omega you have to use the same procedure. Just using a calculator you can solve right. And finally tan inverse of 0.25 omega. So after calculating all these values just substitute this in the formula right. So in this formula when you substitute finally you will be getting the phase values. Here while writing the phase values whenever you just try to round it off okay that will be give you a better answer. For example if this answer is some 11.5 something like that you can round it to 12. 
right again when you have terms like uh, minus 11.2 something like that even you can round it to 11 also even to 12 also it won't make any much bigger difference okay it is up to you so finally we had listed out the values of phase angles right so in this problem we had solved for terms okay we had find out the values for magnitude as well as for the phase angle so here i stopped this problem here the part one comes to an end hope you people understand well if you have any doubt feel free to ask me in the comment section thank you